I know that I've been having, and I'll be almost feeling like some of these people be aware. I know that I'm not that important. I know that Cam Cam probably ain't checking from Anton from AntonDangles.com, but I think that they do. You know, one of the things that they used to say about Trump when he was in office, they said that he was regularly obsessed with the things that people were saying about him online, and he stayed in tune with everything that was happening. He stayed in tune with everything that was happening. And so I'd be remiss to think that these people are not human beings. We think that they are robots. We think that they're not aware. We think that they're so busy that they're not really paying attention to what's going on in their life. I knew a person that had millions, and when I say millions, millions of subscribers that told me personally that they check every single thing that people say about them online. It's wild. Cam Cam decided to go on uh, MSNBC. And she wanted to give her thoughts on Trump and a lot of other things, including her success and her breaking through barriers in order to create space for women that comes after her. Make sure you hit a like for the algorithm, subscribe to the channel, and turn on your notifications. Let's continue, y'all. I wanted to begin by asking you about something that Donald Trump said. And I want you to imagine coming upon this if you were now, today, uh, a at Thousand Oaks Elementary School in uh, in Berkeley, California, where you mm. where you went to school. If you were a girl there now, you know, eighth grader, and you're you're on the bus on the way home, you're walking home, and that this quote, this quote pops up on your phone of Donald Trump saying, "They're poisoning the blood of our country." When you got home after reading that, what would you say to your mother? Mm. He's talking. Now, let's add the complete context, because I did cover this, uh, I believe, the day before yesterday, or was it yesterday? It was the day before yesterday. It was the end of the day before yesterday. And I covered this on Monday, right? And Trump was speaking specifically about the idea that they're leveraging the American people and their power and their office to allow for our borders to continue to be open and flooded by illegal immigrants that's coming into this country undocumented and we don't have any clue of what their background is, to the tune of over 15 to 16 million over the last couple of years and then made these places sanctuary cities. Shout out to Messy Mathematician. I'm going to be reading that super chat shortly. And they're basically, he's basically saying, listen, the fabric of what we've identified the Americas of yesterday is no longer the Americas of tomorrow because they're poisoning the basic fabric of what it is that we exist in today. So now he's using this quote in order to leapfrog and then create this whole narrative about Trump and then having Cam Cam over here answer the question about it. And he's saying, listen, if you've seen that quote, not the entire context, not the speech, but if you've seen that quote from Trump and you're a little girl and you're an eighth grader, what do you think about this? Let's see what Cam Cam got to say about your blood so you know I was raised as you know a child of parents who were active in the civil rights movement and I was raised knowing that there will be some people who will use their voice in a way that is meant to dehumanize <laughs> um, meant to suggest that the vast majority of us don't have anything in common when in fact the vast majority of us have more in common than what separates us. And I would interpret it I think then as I do now, which is, it is language that is meant to divide us. Um, it is language mm. that I think people have rightly found similar to the language of Hitler. And I don't think that there could be any more passive aggressive disrespectful than you can be in that that literally what she just said. There could be no more of a passive aggressive disrespectful person that is speaking on a platform labeling a person like that. Now that type of speech is disgusting. I cannot believe and honestly again I seen it I made sure that it played on a platform. I have not seen this play out. This is my first time actually playing this to actually see what she was going to say. 
And I did not know she was going to say that. I did not know that she was going to say that. The woman that was tasked with stopping the flow of migrants and illegal immigrants into our country is saying this about a red-blooded American. I think it's just critically important that we remind each other, including our children, that the true measure of the strength of a leader mm. is based not on who they beat down, but who they lift up. And um, sadly, I think that there is something perverse that has happened in our country over the last many years, which is to suggest that strength looks like a bully when, in fact, the, the real character of a leader is someone who has empathy, who has some level of concern and care for the suffering of other people and then does something to alleviate that suffering. You know, the interesting thing about it is that I've seen her over in other countries, including Ghana, advocating for alphabet community rights. That's a fact. Advocating for over in countries that don't want that over there, but they're, she is bringing this, this vision that they have that was executed beautifully by Obama over here in the United States of America. And she's bringing that vision over into places that they don't even want over there. Can you imagine, ladies and gentlemen, can you imagine, God forbid, anything happening to Joe Biden? Because I don't want to see anything happen to anybody that's a leader of the United States of America, especially while they're in, our, in office. Could you imagine that this would be the president of the United States? She's number two. Number two in line. The number two candidate in line, probably tasked to be the successor of Joe Biden after if he ever was to get elected again for a second term. This is a woman that is number two in line to succeed the president of the United States of America. This is crazy. And both of your parents uh, were immigrants. Your, your mother is no longer uh, with us. What do you suppose she would say, hearing Donald Trump say that, about her? Well, Read me on Super Chat shortly. My mother could use some very salty language sometimes. <laughs> so I'm not going to tell you exactly what I think she might say. Um, but... You know, my mother was a fighter, and she was a fighter for equality. My mother had two goals in her life, to raise her two daughters and end breast cancer. My mother dedicated her life to solving problems and taking care of people. And I, uh, there's no question in my mind that her response to that kind of language would be probably she also was a student of history. We've seen this before. We know where this could go. So stand up and fight for what is right. The uh, situation in Israel now for the administration seems to be trying to find the balance between Israel's right to defend itself as a country and protecting the lives of civilian uh, Palestinians. Do you think that yeah. you and, and uh, the Israeli government have achieved that balance or has it reached a point or when might it reach a point where the correct balance is simply a ceasefire? So our position as the United States and the position that the president and, and, and I and we have taken from the day of the horror of October 7, where, as you know, 1,200 people were massacred, many of them young people who were simply going to a concert um, where, where women were, were assaulted and abused, uh, our position has always been that Israel has a right to defend itself without any question. And how it does so matters. And as I have said many times, and I think we know that far too many innocent Palestinians have been killed. And it is important then that, and we have made clear our perspective on this, that, um, th that there be a lessening of the intensity and, and more precision around how Israel um, goes after Hamas and the leadership of Hamas. And as you know, Secretary Blinken, Secretary uh, Austin have paid now repeated trips to the region to make clear our, our position on that. Um, but 
we do also need to focus on what is happening now toward what is possible and, and, and should be possible the day after, as we call it. Uh, Lawrence, as you know, I was in Dubai recently meeting with a number of leaders, including many Arab leaders, to talk about our commitment as the United States to a two-state solution and a commitment to doing the hard work that that will require to get to a place where we, for the principles that we have stated, um, will insist there be no reoccupation of Gaza by the Israelis, there will be no forced displacement of Palestinians, but we work toward equal measures of security, prosperity, and freedom for Israelis and for Palestinians. And so, You know, the thing that I want to know is, what are y'all doing for the American people? Because I don't see any of that. We're going to give so much money over to Ukraine. We're going to give so much money over into uh, the military in order to continue to support or empower what's going on with this war over there in Israel and everything like that. And meanwhile, we can't get a dollar over into our border patrol or to stand up better walls or to continue to fight for illegal immigration for people just walking into this country and just undocumented no nothing sanctuary cities no help no solutions nobody speak english free health care free everything justice and freedom for all justice and freedom for all we keep talking about and she can talk extensively about what's going on and meeting with dubai and, and arab leaders and all of this other type of stuff but the very thing that she stood on and what the Biden administration said was she was going to be the border czar, meaning that she was going to be the one to answer to and solve for any problems related to the border. And we see nothing and nobody doing anything outside of holding funding hostage for what it is that we should be doing in our borders in order to continue to supply more money over to Ukraine and Israel. So that is a big part of our goal at this point as well, which is to do what is possible to lay the pathway for that possibility and that goal. Uh, Secretary Austin, uh, speaking in Israel yesterday, said that uh, protecting Palestinian civilians in Gaza is both a moral duty and a strategic imperative. Does the Israeli government agree with you on that? Every conversations, but our for along with them is obviously Vladimir Putin's attack and war on Ukraine. Ukraine funding uh, is now, of course, facing struggles that it wasn't facing a year ago. Uh, how important is it and, and what is the future of Ukraine funding? If you get it now, will, will there be more support for Ukraine throughout the year? Lawrence, it's critically important that we see this through. From the beginning, let's be clear, when this happened on February 24th, uh, of that year, what we saw is a violation of longstanding international rules and norms. The, and the, those rules and norms being the importance of protecting sovereignty and territorial integrity, the importance of standing up against any nation forcibly trying to change borders. And we Long story short, yes, we're going to continue to fund, fund what's happening over in Ukraine. We're going to continue to give $60 billion dollars over to Ukraine has just become a part of our national. Now, y'all got to remember also that when this money and this funding goes over there, that's your money. That's your money. This isn't money that just comes out of nowhere, that's just made up out of the blue. This is the debt the American people have to, pay, have to pay interest on. But also on top of that, this is your tax dollars. That's not going to the things that actually help you, but it's going over into things that they can't actually justify. And you have, you have to ask yourself why. Well, I know why. I have a theory as to why. And it has nothing to do with actually protecting the American people, but it has everything to do with who has an interest in what's happening over in Ukraine. And so they just throwing words and anything out there and they trying to justify, hey, we just going to continue. So you telling me that Biden himself can say when he got elected that he would never give another dollar over into covering our border, but we can make sure that they can cover the borders of, of countries that we don't allegedly, supposedly, not really supposed to have an interest in. Okay, all right. We, the United States of America, have been a leader for the world and our allies, and I, in particular Joe Biden, mm. has been a profound leader in bringing together nations to the point that we are now looking at an expansion of NATO where some, before this happened, question the relevance of NATO, its very existence. Foundational pre chancellors and kings. And even in tell you, our one and the understanding includes an issue favorite experiences as a senator 
was being on the Senate Intelligence Committee. And I'll tell you why. That meeting took place in a skiff, which is a secure room where no one could bring in their cell phones. There was no public, no press, just us. And people would then walk in that room, regardless of their political party, and take off their jackets, have a cup of coffee, roll up their sleeves, and not act as Democrats or Republicans, but act as Americans who should prioritize, first and foremost, our national security and the best interest of the people of our country in terms of ensuring that we are standing for our principles. And has always been for, it was for 50 years, uh, a day of protest in Washington, uh, usually not very large protest, but protest by the people who wanted to overturn Roe versus Wade. Apparently, it's going to be something different uh, this year. You announced uh, today that on January 22nd, which is that anniversary, 51st anniversary of Roe versus Wade, uh, the vice president's reproductive freedom tour begins uh, around going around the country, beginning in Wisconsin. Uh, the, listen to what the hell we got going on, y'all. This country is falling apart at the seams. They're going on the let me let me play that again to get the exact name of the tour begins uh, versus Wade uh, the vice president's reproductive freedom tour the vice president's reproductive freedom tour they're gonna be flying across the country in order to go on tour and you know why because that's the one issue that a lot of Republicans get caught up on is reproductive rights. The one issue that Republicans get caught up on are, is reproductive rights. It's the reason why some of these local elections are haywire. And they going on a vice president freedom body t tour. What in the God's name is happening? They going on tour like they rock stars. Are you Beyonce? Are you Beyonce? Is this the Renaissance tour? Or is this the vice president's free, free productive freedom tour? Are you Yonce? You got a new movie that's coming out. <laughs> oh, I love this country. Begins uh, around going around the country, beginning in Wisconsin, uh, which obviously everyone knows yeah. is a very important electoral state. Uh, this seems to be uh, both a, a hugely important issue, obviously, to Democrats and to the Biden administration, but it also seems to be uh, the beginning of a campaign, in a presidential campaign, in which uh, reproductive Jesus rights could Christ. be the number one issue for your campaign. Reproductive it is, but I'm going to add, Lawrence, to, the, to who it is important to. It's important to the American people. Mm. The majority of Americans agree that the freedom to make decisions about one's own body should be with the individual and not their government telling them what to do. And we saw that in the midterms. She's will on allow tour them to promote abortion rights, starting in Wisconsin. That's the tagline at the bottom. VP Harris launches nationwide tour to promote abortion rights. I'm going to just leave that right there. I'm leaving it right there. I don't have a, a I'm not having my opinion on it. I'm not speaking on it right now. I'm going to read the super chat shortly, but I just want y'all to understand what's going on. Access to the health care they need who are suffering. There's only one state in the South and that's Virginia that still has retained a law that allows a woman to make decisions about her own body. And so this is an issue that, yes, I do believe will be resolved in November of next year, because I do know that the American people fight for freedom and believe in the woman's right to make decisions about her own body. But understand, every day until then, there are women suffering in our country in horrible ways. And look, let me tell you, there's going to be a split screen on this, too, in November of 24, to your point about the election. There's really going to be, of all the issues we've discussed so far, none of them are binary. This one is. November 24, binary. On the one hand, you're going to have the folks who are standing, such as President Joe Biden and me, saying we trust women to be able to make a decision about what is in their best interest, and women can trust us to protect their fundamental freedoms. And on the other hand, you're going to have folks who want a national ban and have the gall to tell women who are even survivors of rape or incest that they don't have the right to make decisions about what happens to their body next. So I think there's going to be a clear uh, choice 
on this issue and so many others next year in November. Well, that, that brings us to a challenge that you have uh, in this campaign, because there seemed to be a polling that shows a single issue reaction uh, on the Democratic side of voters, of voters who support you've had. Uh, they don't like uh, your policy in Israel at the moment, so they're not uh, supporting uh, the Biden-Harris ticket. Uh, but that same person might fully approve enthusiastically of what you just said. Uh, and, and so the question becomes, when you get to November, how do you take all of the different single issue uh, voters out there who are disappointed uh, for various reasons uh, in the Biden administration and say to them, here is the single issue uh, that, that you should concentrate on, or here is why you should vote for this ticket despite uh, what you don't like about the issue that you're, you disapprove of? I do believe, Lawrence, and I'm, and I'm familiar, obviously, with the, the term and the, the, the philosophy about single issue voters, but Again, back to the split screen. I mean, you look at bans. We want to ban assault weapons. They want to ban books. You look at it in terms of where we are in the economy. We are fighting for working people and increasing access to capital for small businesses. And they're cutting taxes on the richest people in the country to the point that they are contributing to a deficit. Where we are on choice, we just talked about. Where we are on climate. The deficit is all of the monies that we allocate towards things that don't matter. War, social services. You got half of the budget is going to social services in the military. I can't do it, bro. She got anything else you want to say on this? This is the way you were received uh, as vice president uh, in your trip uh, to Africa and what it meant to the girls there. Let's just take a look at this. Look at this promotional footage, y'all. Yes, welcome here to Madam Zambia, Your Excellency, the Vice President of the United States of America, Madam Kamala Harris. Please feel at home. From the moment that I saw that video, I've been waiting to ask you, what did that moment feel like? It was pure joy. You know, it's um, <laughs> we all hope in our lives that we can have an impact in a way that hopefully inspires or gives people a sense of confidence in what is possible for themselves and then who they love in their community. And um, it was very special, Lawrence. It was very special. And thanks for sharing that clip. I, I hadn't seen that. Um, it was very special. And, you know. Man, get the hell off my screen, bro. I can't do this junk, bro.